A Colorado woman who stabbed her mother 79 times inside their home in Aurora. I didn't murder anybody. I'm just a random girl on the Hello. street that you ambushed. I'm not evil. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Because you have no conscience. That's the exclusive footage of Isabella Guzman's interrogation a few hours after she brutally stabbed her mother 79 times. The heinous act made Isabella infamous on TikTok, but it also changed the course of her life forever. Here are 10 famous TikTokers caught up in murder. Number 10. Nicola Priest, August 8th, 2020. TikToker Nicola Priest beat her daughter to death for interrupting her during sex. Born and raised in Solihull, England, Nicola Priest was a 23 year old mother and an influencer of some sort on TikTok. She would post these videos on and off in hopes of gaining fame and attention. While her followers weren't such diehard fans of her, they loved her adorable little daughter, Kaylee Jade Priest. Nicola's fans noticed in those videos that Kaylee Priest did show signs of abuse on her body, but they didn't think much of it. They believed she was a child and probably got those injuries from playing rough or unintentionally hurting herself. However, these injuries were inflicted through physical abuse from her mother, which eventually led to her death. Nicola Priest and her 22-year-old boyfriend, Callum Redfern, used this girl as a punching bag. They would occasionally beat her up with the intention of causing serious harm anytime she interfered in their little time to have fun. One night, Callum came over to Nicola's apartment in hopes that he'd be getting lucky. However, due to Kaylee's constant crying, they couldn't focus on having a good time. And why was Kaylee crying, you ask? Well, she was constantly throwing up that day and was left in a pool of her own vomit. Plus, she was extremely ill. Out of anger, both Nicola and her boyfriend proceeded to beat the heck out of Kaylee so they could have their way. In the process, they killed her. The biggest mistake they made was waiting till the next day before calling for help. According to reports, if they had called emergency services on time, Kaylee might have survived. However, what followed next was even more troubling. Nicola decided to exploit her daughter's death for TikTok fame. She posted numerous RIP videos on her account, getting her fans to sympathize with her. As disgusting as this sounds, Nicola was already under investigation for her daughter's death, and after substantial evidence was obtained, she and her boyfriend were charged with the murder of Kaylee Jade Priest. Nicola was handed 15 years, while her boyfriend served 14, being that he was also involved in the crime. And well, we hope she's happy now for being a famous killer and an evil mother. Number 9. Jonte Kavon Collier and Eric Dodds August 1st, 2022, gunshots were fired at East Peachtree Street in Rossville, Georgia, targeting 29-year-old Dakota Bradshaw through his home window. The perpetrators, Jonte Kavon Collier and Eric Dodds, were a popular TikTok and OnlyFans couple, known for their LGBTQ plus content with their 800,000 followers on TikTok. In contrast, the victim, Bradshaw, was a straight-A student studying cybersecurity. On the day Bradshaw was murdered, the shooters stationed themselves in front of the house. Immediately sighting his reflection through a window, they shot at him and zoomed off. The police responded to that 911 from the neighbors who heard the gunshot. By the time they arrived, eyewitnesses claimed they saw a red truck and a blue Dodge Challenger parked at the scene of that murder. So how exactly do Collier and Eric Dodds fit into this case? Well, according to a report from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, the couple had flashed a similar looking car to that described by eyewitnesses witnesses in one of their TikTok videos. This led the agency to collect a lot of phone data, tracking the couple from Huntsville to Chattanooga to where the murder occurred. August 10, 2022, Jonte was arrested as a prime suspect in the murder. This caused an outrage on TikTok and his loyal fans pushing hashtags advocating his release. Eric Dodds posted multiple videos on the platform disputing the claims against Jonte and even went as far as opening a GoFundMe to prove his innocence. If you're asking how a GoFundMe relates to proving anything, we have no clue. But six days later, Eric was also arrested in connection to the murder. Two other suspects were also arrested in connection with one of them, Dodge Larissa Collins, actually pleading guilty. However, the TikTok couple were convicted of murder, receiving a life sentence without the possibility of parole, and an additional five years for possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. The sentencing of Kavan and Eric sparked a wave of outrage on TikTok, yet it was overshadowed by the tremendous uproar generated by this next TikToker's conviction. Number 8. 
Cameron Heron. Cameron Heron's probably the reason why your crush is so in love with TikTok. Anyways, May 23rd, 2018. Cameron was driving his Mustang GT along the iconic Tampa Bay Shore Boulevard before crashing into a 24-year-old mother with her daughter, resulting in their deaths. Cameron, 18 years old at the time, was living with his parents and older brother in Tampa Bay, Florida. He attended Tampa Catholic High School and received a lot of female attention because of his good looks. However, after graduating, he received that Ford Mustang as a gift from his parents. And as we already know, this gift would get Cameron into a lot of trouble. On the day of the accident, Cameron, his elder brother Tristan, and his friend John Baranaw, who had a Nissan Altima, were all headed to the gym. John and Cameron decided to race, resulting in Cameron running into that mother with her child while they strolled onto the road. At the time of the accident, Cameron was driving 102 miles an hour, which is two and a half times more than the legal limit. As you'd expect, all three of these guys were arrested and charged with the death of these victims. Now, we get it. It was an obvious mistake from Cameron. He didn't intend to crash into the victims. However, it was discovered that Cameron had fun driving around 165 miles an hour on Tampa roads, generally, meaning the crash was no one-time mistake, but the result of a thoughtless and irresponsible mindset. His friend, John Baranaw, decided to take a plea deal and was given six years in prison and 15 years probation upon release. Aaron's older brother, Tristan, was lucky enough to have all charges against him drop, probably because he was the only passenger without an active role in this case. April 2021. Cameron was handed a 24-year sentence for this crime, causing outrage online. There seems to be a portion of people, mostly women, who believe Cameron is too good-looking to be served that amount of time behind bars. His TikTok account gained 2 million followers without having any videos posted, while the hashtags Cameron Heron and Justice for Cameron have been viewed 2 billion times collectively on TikTok. If Cameron isn't granted parole, he'll be released on May 24, 2045, meaning he'll be spending the most part of his life behind bars. Number 7. Claire Miller That's the face of TikTok star Claire Miller, convicted in 2021 for murdering her own sister. Born in 2007, Claire Elena Miller lived with her parents, Mark and Mary Miller, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. She had a sister who was five years older named Helen. Helen had cerebral palsy and was confined to a wheelchair. Both sisters attended the private Lancaster Country Day School and after school, Claire would lock herself up in her room while she made TikTok videos. And most of these videos were harmless, showing Miller lip-syncing to sad pop songs or dancing around her room. These videos got Claire over 22,000 followers on her main account, had spirits and such consulting, but that number got way higher when she committed the heinous act. February 22, 2021, the Miller family had their Sunday dinner together and all said their good nights, just like any other family. However, a few minutes after midnight, Claire began plotting to kill her sister. She went down to the kitchen, grabbed a knife, went into her sister's room, and brutally stabbed her nine times in the neck before using a pillow to suffocate her semi-conscious body. At 1.08 a.m., Claire made a phone call to 911, informing them that she had just stabbed her sister. At 1.10 a.m., the cops arrived at the Miller residence, meeting Claire covered in her sister's blood, and her parents now aware of what just happened. The cops tried providing some aid to Helen before medics arrived, but she didn't survive that attack. She was pronounced dead at 4.02 a.m. At first, everyone, including her parents, felt the murder wasn't premeditated and was probably an accident. However, the idea of that changed the moment Claire was offered a box of McDonald's, and she said, Oh, McDonald's! I would have killed someone sooner if I knew I was going to get McDonald's. Now, as if that wasn't bad enough, Claire went on to make a derogatory statement about the murder by saying she Michael Myers her sister, referring to the character from the 1978 horror movie Halloween. After a psychological evaluation, a psychiatrist claimed Claire suffered from auditory hallucinations and that she attempted to cut her own throat the same night she killed her sister. March 10, 23. Claire Miller pled guilty to third-degree murder, and although she was ruled mentally ill, but not mentally disabled, she was sentenced to spend a minimum of 12 and a half years and a maximum of 40 years in prison. In his sentencing, the judge felt compassion for the parents by saying these words. The usual chasm between the prosecution and defense tables collapses today. Mr. and Mrs. Miller faced the heartbreaking challenge of sitting in support of both the victim and the accused for a family who's already faced such great loss. Today's proceedings undoubtedly risk intensifying the pain that has defined the past two years. 
Number 6. Jin Kidd That was famous TikToker Jin Kidd with his wife before he brutally murdered her. August 21st, 2021. Jin Kidd, whose real name is Ali Abulaban, fatally shot and killed his wife, Anna Abulaban, along with her male friend, Rayburn Cardenas Baron, at their apartment complex in San Diego. Prior to this, Abulaban had a large following on social media. He nearly had a million followers on TikTok and 170,000 YouTube subscribers, with a total of about 25 million views. You might know him for his applaudable impressions of Tony Montana's character from Scarface, as well as impressions of rapper 6 9 But most importantly, he posted videos of his healthy relationship with his wife, making his loyal fans see him as a power couple. However, weeks before her death, Anna was taking steps to end the marriage. She accused him of domestic violence, and even contemplated getting a restraining order against him. To avoid any complications, Jin Kidd volunteered to move out of the apartment they shared and stayed clear of her. But he did it. Before leaving that apartment, Jin Kidd got copies of the keys so he could have access anytime he wanted. Then on the morning of the incident, he would break into the apartment when his wife was out to drop off their daughter at school. Then he would install a listening app on his daughter's iPad before leaving. Later that day, he heard his wife giggling with an unknown male through the device that was connected to the app. Immediately, he grabbed his shotgun, drove down to the apartment, used that spare key to enter, and brutally shot Anna's male friend three times before shooting her as well. Filled with regret, he left the apartment and called his mom to confess his crimes. He also drove to pick his daughter up from school, telling her he had hurt mummy. And it was obvious this guy just acted out of impulse because while he was driving home with his daughter, he called the cops to report the crime. He was later arrested that day when a security camera caught him entering and leaving the apartment in haste. At first, Jin Kidd was quite cooperative with the police, but he messed up when he pled not guilty in his trial. Now the prosecutors are pushing for the maximum punishment of the death penalty, if he's found guilty, of course. Number 5. Yandere Freak January 17, 2021 Famous cosplay TikToker, popularly known as Yandere Freak or Snow the Salt Queen, shot and killed her friend, Ellen Rose Hastings, in the head. Yandere Freak, whose real name is Mary Ann Oliver Snow, had over 1.6 million followers before her account was taken down from the platform. You see, Mary Ann hosted a sleepover at her house in Houston, Texas, and had a few friends around. Over the course of the night, the group decided to watch this Batman movie while they drank and smoked recklessly. In the process of having a good time, Mary Ann pulled out a gun that her boyfriend had left over. According to her story, her boyfriend had told her that there were no bullets in it. Sadly, it was fully loaded. Helen, probably drunk off her mind, teased Mary Ann to shoot her in what seemed like a scene out of a horror movie. Mary Ann fired a shot straight to her head, dropping her body to the ground. At this point, everyone was freaking out. They immediately called the cops and tried putting a teddy bear on her head to stop the bleeding. When the cops arrived, Helen would be taken to the hospital and her parents were informed, but sadly, she was already gone. Mary Ann was held down at the police station, but I gotta tell you now, this was the moment things took a weird turn. January 21st, 2021. Mary Ann was released from prison after a $20,000 bond was paid. On top of that, no one knows who exactly paid it. Mary Ann violated her curfew, missed a pretrial date related to the case, and allowed the battery on her GPS tracking device to die. Yet, no legal action was taken against her. After she got out, she continued posting those TikTok videos under a new private account named Snow the Salt Queen. Her content contained videos where she can be seen cosplaying Harley Quinn and sometimes covered in fake blood. Two years have passed and Marianne is still very much active on social media. Her Instagram has been shadow banned, but she still posts content with a link tree to her Patreon, OnlyFans, and Amazon wishlist. No one knows why she hasn't been convicted or if she'll ever get convicted. It's safe to say Mary Ann got away with murder. Number 4. Isabella Guzman Isabella isn't necessarily a famous TikToker, but she has gained notoriety on that app for murdering her mother in 2013. 
Isabella was born in 95, and she lived with both her parents in Colorado. From a young age, she and her mother were always at loggerheads. The Guzman family wasn't financially stable, meaning Isabella couldn't get the things she wanted. On top of that, her parents got a divorce, and her mom remarried almost immediately. This did more harm than good, and by harm I meant it led to her mother's death. August 27, 2013, the day before the murder, Isabella sent her mother, Yun Mi Ho, an email that read, you will pay. This was among many other emails she had been sending her threatening to harm her. Now her mother was so worried by these emails she reported Isabella to the police. And only if the police knew they'd be back in less than 24 hours to meet a murder scene, they might have done more than just counsel Isabella. 9 p.m. August 28th. Mrs. Yun Mi Ho came back from work and decided to take a shower. Less than 10 minutes later, Mr. Ryan Ho, Isabella's stepdad, heard his wife screaming his name for help in the bathroom. He rushed to save her, but Isabella was pushing up against the bathroom door, preventing him from entering. He went downstairs, called the police, and when he came back, he saw Guzman standing in front of the bathroom doorway holding a knife and his wife on the floor covered in blood. Isabella walked past him and he was too shocked to even hold her back. When when officers arrived on the scene, they found Yun Min Ho lying naked on the bathroom floor covered in blood next to a baseball bat. An autopsy revealed that she suffered 31 stabs to the face and 48 stabs to the neck. On the other hand, Isabella was arrested after a 16-hour manhunt. She was charged with first-degree murder, but she was set free. I know, it sounds crazy, right? Well, the judge presiding over the case accepted Isabella's plea of insanity and found her not guilty. This is one of the reasons why her story has been a major topic over the years on TikTok. Many people are believing it was premeditated murder, given the fact that she'd threatened her mom so many times in the past. But at the same time, the doctors diagnosed her with schizophrenia, leading the judge to recognize her plea of insanity. She's been locked up in the mental facility since 2013, and many fear will be let back onto the streets of Colorado sometime in 2024. Number 3. Sonia Khan Divorce is a hard thing to deal with, everyone knows that, but sometimes the frustration and anger that comes with it leads people to do the craziest things you can imagine. Like in the case of famous TikToker Sonia Khan and her estranged husband, Rahil Ahmad. April 8, 1993 marked the birth of Sonia Khan to her parents, Haider Farouk Khan and Shazia Khan. She lived a pretty normal life in Chattanooga, Tennessee with her parents and even graduated from the University of Tennessee Chattanooga, where she double majored in psychology in women's studies. However, her marriage a few years after kicked off her days of misfortune. June 2021, Sonia Khan got married to Rahil Ahmad after five years of dating. Then the couple moved to Chicago, and Sonia would never be the same. She became depressed and even threatened to kill herself on many occasions. It got so bad that she filed for a divorce just six months after their marriage. Now, there was no issue with this, and Rahil respectfully moved out of their Chicago home to some place in Alpharetta, Georgia. However, he began having an issue when Sonia decided to share her divorce experience on TikTok. She shared some pretty detailed info about their marriage and the domestic violence she endured during those six months. That pissed off Rahil, because he felt Sonia was in some way tarnishing his name and image online, and he felt the need to stop her. Rahil traveled over 800 miles from Georgia to Chicago to kill his wife and commit suicide side right after. It's really messed up when you think about it, but that's exactly what happened. His body was discovered by the police inside her apartment with a 9mm Glock, a suicide note, and a head wound. At the time of her death, she had over 22,000 TikTok followers. Her death in general caused a global conversation amongst Asian social media communities regarding gender-based domestic violence in relationships and family. The key word here is family, because unlike Sonya Khan, who was killed by her estranged husband, this next TikToker was killed by her own brother. Number 2. Iman Sami Magdid, March 6th, 2022. Famous Iraqi TikToker known as Maria was shot dead by her brother in an honor killing practice. Now, before we dive deeper into how she was killed, let's first go over why she was killed in the first place. Aman was very active on TikTok, with about 47,000 followers. But despite coming from a strong Iraqi society, Aman wore crop tops and oftentimes filmed herself smoking cigarettes. On top of this, Aman was a strong and ardent feminist, being praised for her efforts by followers. In addition to questioning social conventions of attire, 
Many reports online claim that she allegedly disobeyed Islamic religious regulations, like wearing a crucifix around her neck. Her family believes she was never converted and just liked wearing it as a form of jewelry. But her brother would take it upon himself to end her life. On the said day, her brother waited for her on the road in the city of Edbil, the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Then when he saw her, he fired eight shots at her body, killing her on the spot. He was later apprehended by the police, but no one knows for certain what happened to him afterward. As you might have guessed, Amon's tragic death caused a massive outrage on social media. A huge number of followers were disgusted by the regressiveness of practices like honor killing. It also put the spotlight on Kurdistan, which according to our findings, has emerged a hotspot of gender crimes in recent years. In one of her final posts on Facebook, Iman wrote, I believe that humans will always suffer at the hands of other humans. And number one, Mahek Bukhari. This is the most recent and by far the most shocking of all the TikTokers caught up in murder. If you're an active TikTok user, you've probably come across a video or two of Mahek Bukhari on your FYP. If you haven't, Mahek is a popular TikTok star with a mother who enthusiastically supported her influential daughter. However, one thing led to another and they both got caught up in a crime. From a very young age, Mahek aspired to have a social media career. After graduating college, she began working on her online personality, soon garnering over 129,000 TikTok followers, earning herself many brand partnerships. On the other hand, she had a very good relationship with her mother on stream. However, when her mother met a 21-year-old guy, Saqib Hussein, it led to a tragic chain of events, resulting in both mother and daughter being convicted of double murder. In 2019, Saqib and Ansreen began dating, but two years later, the relationship turned sour. Ansreen tried to break it off, and Saqib was upset. He begged her to stay with him, but Ansreen was tired. At this point, Saqib was desperate to be with Ansreen so much so that he threatened to send her explicit photos to her husband. Keep in mind that at this time, Mahek had no idea her mother and this guy were in an intimate relationship. However, when her mother finally told her, Mahek decided it was time to take the law into her own hands. Now, she could have easily reported Saqib to the police for blackmail, but she didn't. Instead, she plotted with her friend, a car mechanic named Rakan Karwan, to lure Saqib into a meeting and pay him off with 3,000 pounds. Rakan then enlisted the help of his best friend, Rais Jamal, as well as Rais's cousin, Amir Jamal, and other friends, Sanafgala Mustafa, Natasha Akhtar, and Mohammed Patel. February 11, 2022, the group arrives at a Tesco supermarket in Leicester, waiting for Saqib. The plan was to ambush and kill him. On the other hand, Saqib asked one of his friends, Hashim Ijazuddin, to drive him to the location. Little did Hashim know he was about to be a victim in a murder case. Immediately, Saqib and Hashim arrived at the Tesco parking lot. Sensing something was wrong, they drive off, now being followed by Mahek, her mom, and Raisa's friends in two different cars. A very very smart Saqib immediately dialed 999 to inform the cops of the ambush. He gave him details of the cars chasing him as well as every other thing needed to find Mahek and her mother. Mahek and her friends eventually caught up and blocked Saqib's car along the highway. At this point, the last thing the cops heard was Saqib and his friends screaming for help before the call ended. Later, police reports showed that Mahek's friends held him hostage and burned him alive in their car. The group was really smart not to leave traces of their involvement at the murder scene, but were ridiculous dumb to have committed that act on a road with multiple CCTV cameras. Probably realizing their mistake, they decided to park their vehicles in a secluded area and take a long walk home in the middle of the night. However, they were again picked up by surveillance cameras along the road. I mean, they had the worst murder plan you could think of. The police, having Saqib's call and CCTV footage showing the Bakaris around the vicinity of the crime, made their arrests in the early hours of the morning, August 4th, 2023. Mahek Bakari and her mom were both found guilty of two counts of murder. They've each been given life in prison, with Mahek mandated to serve at least 31 years and 8 months, and Ansreen serving a minimum of 26 years and 9 months, before the possibility of parole.